Get this, Scientology does not have a good track record. I don't need to really say much about that for you to know. But Hebert Gents was the president of Scientology. I mean, he was more well known than David Miscavige at one point. He lost his only son, his own son, which was also the child of Karen de la Carriere. That was his wife. Karen speaks to us today about the loss of a child and how this cult separates family members who are no longer part of it. High control cult. She was not allowed to see her son and they really enforced that within Scientology. Not only did she lose a son and you get to see that, but she discusses some of the other harmful, extremely high control, coercive things they do to enforce their members to maintain order. This is a cult that I hope gets eradicated at some point. Welcome back to Myth Vision. I'm your host, Derek Lambert. Karen De La Carriere is an ex-Scientologist who was ranked at the top. Welcome back to Myth Vision. Derek, this story today is the story of losing a child in death because they were raised in a cult. It's probably my biggest heartache and you've been wanting for a while for me to share the story, so here it is. I'm going to start off by telling you that Alexander married a girl in the Sea Org, another girl who'd signed a billion-year contract. They got married, and after a year or two, she got pregnant. And at that time, Scientology was vigilant in coerced abortions. So she had to abort her child. Mm. What, the, what the group do is they convince you that it's the greatest good. You're on a mission to save the planet. You don't have time for babies and children. They're a distraction. So she aborted. Her name was Andrea. And she had a very bad aftermath reaction. She was just so depressed and so upset because she had a, a real, a real purpose to be a mom. He wanted to be a mom. Anyway, they're given the cult <laughs> gives out birth control pills. You know, Derek, this is so. Completely opposite to the Mormons. Tell me a little about that. The Mormons want you to have more and more children, right? Right. So there'll be more and more Mormon population. Scientology wants you to kill and abort. In the Bible, all the firstborn children, Moses, uh, was saved by sailing in a little raft. But the Bible actually has stories of killing the, killing the baby, no? Mm -hmm. Are you thinking yes. something, Derek? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just hearing you out. Yeah, no, it does. It has stories of infants. Uh, uh, the story about Moses, like you said, they went to go kill the newborn children. Or you could say the story with Herod in the New Testament. There's a story about killing all the newborn children. Um, this is definitely a story that goes on, but like this specific systematic approach that you see going on with Scientology, they want to control their members. And they know that, uh, I guess you could say the love of a mother for their child or vice versa gets in the way and can stop one from being serious about the faith. In fact, you might even go so far as to say that might be one of the reasons that um, the Apostle Paul, when he talks about, you know, don't act, don't even get married. The end is so close. He expected the end to happen soon. Don't get married. Like, try not to have kids. You know, you're living in the end times. You don't want to do that. Um, but at the same time, he at least said, well, if you're burning with lust, then marry. 
So Scientology mm-hmm. is doing really, um, they're really just trying to control their members, it seems. And your son is caught up in this system that you also didn't really realize till 40 years later, really like, oh my gosh. And just, can we give a picture of him real quick to give people an idea of your child? I was married to the president of the church who dealt with celebrities. So there's John Travolta visiting uh, my ex-husband Heber in the office and there's Alexander uh, Jench with John. Okay, so Andrea had to abort her child. One year later, she got pregnant again. But by now, the internet is in a fury of actually whistleblowing on Scientology coerced abortions. It's all over the web in the ex-Scientology communities. It's covered by the Daily Mail and other big newspaper outlets. Scientology enforces abortion. Now, let me make a little waiver here. Derek and I are not talking about whether free, free, pro-choice or... <laughs> yeah, this is oh, not a political... Pro-choice. This is mandatory, enforced, coerced by management. Right. This is different than aborting through pro-choice. The, the coerced is enforced with no power of choice. The power of choice is taken away. You will abort. Mm-hmm. So by now, Laura de Crescenzo, famous famous name, was doing a huge lawsuit, and it was Tony Ortega and Mike Rinder were posting and showing, and Laura complained about her enforced abortions in the lawsuit. So now Scientology was a little bit in trepidation of putting the hammer down to coerce the abortion. And what they did is they gave Andrea and Alexander power of choice to move out, to move out of the seal. Because you cannot have babies in the seal. You can't have parenting. You've got to work a brutal schedule. This baby nonsense is considered so, it's considered, um, you're frying other fish. That's how they call it. Oh, you're into the baby game, huh? You want more time off, right? You're frying other fish. Other fish means doing stuff other than Scientology, extorting money, working around the clock, selling books, getting people lured in. That's what you're supposed to do all the time. Okay, so they leave. And Alex, I have a large home. Alexander was going to move in here, but by now, Scientology's intelligence division knew that I was talking to Mike Rinder and Marty Rutherford. And I had a good, a good guy, misguided, but a good guy, come to visit me. And he said, Karen, I'm coming with one last warning to you. This is the last. This is if you continue to talk to Marty and Mike Rinder, it's going to be irrevocable. You will get a suppressive person declared. And I jumped on him. And I said, how do you know? How do you know I'm talking to them? You're Ill- Legally buying phone records. That's illegal. That's the only way they could have known. My printer was in Florida. Marty was in Texas. How on earth would they know that I was talking to them? Mm. And uh, he demurred and said, well, we have, no, we have private investigators that find out stuff. Anyway, they knew. So they took Alexander and Andrea and shipped them to Dallas, Fort Worth to work for a wealthy Scientologist. 
1,500 to 1,000 miles away from me. And Alexander was indoctrinated to not speak to me. They had already started severing the connection for the only reason that I was hobnobbing and in cahoots with those who'd left and were exposing the bad deeds. So Alexander was completely disconnected from me. Hmm. One day, a couple of years later, he comes back from Dallas, Fort Worth. He has a high fever. And he's living with Andrea's parents, the in-laws. The husband, the male matri the male patriarch in the family, <laughs> he was the head of CCHR, this unhinged group that go after Psych it's a Scientology Division, Citizens Commission on Human Rights, and they are rabid against psychiatry. They attend psychiatric annual conventions and have helicopters going by saying Scientology psychiatry kills scientology hires helicopters to fly over psychiatric conventions with you know how you have uh, uh, these helicopters that can give messages yeah the they do it on beaches a lot yeah and the beaches and the, their message is psychiatry kills they want to shake up and rattle the psychiatrists come out for lunch and they look in the sky and they see the psychiatrists. Jeez. So Alexander comes back, he has a high fever and he's lying in bed. Oh, two days before he's lying in bed, he visits with an OT8 called Stan Gerson. Stan, Stan does magician work as a hobby, and he teaches Alexander, Alexander magic tricks. He's like, a, he's like an uncle, and Alexander can't breathe. This is two days before he dies. He can't breathe. And you know what Stan Gerson does? Touches us. Touchesis is a Scientology procedure where you touch different parts of the body and say, feel my finger, thank you. Feel my finger, thank you. Instead of rushing Alexander, not breathing can equals death. But instead of any medical procedure or examination, he does feel my finger, Thank you. Feel my finger. Thank you. This is the OT8 indoctrinated Stan Gerson handling my son. And I'm his mom. And I'm half an hour down the road. And I can have him have a full medical. But I'm cut off by the cult of Scientology. Cut off. Cut off. Alexander, even though he protests that, he told a couple of Scientology buddies, I don't agree that I can't talk to my mom. I don't really agree that I absolutely cannot talk to my mom. Hmm. Goes to bed. He's immobilized for a day or so. And when they discover him, point of no return. He's dead. Instead of them even calling 911 in case resuscitation, he takes his kid to school. Andre is dead. He takes his kid to school, then comes back. And then there are 20, 30 calls to OSA first, not 911, to Office of Special Affairs. What? The dead body is lying there, but they're indoctrinated. You must first inform the church. This is a hot potato. He's the son of the president. He's the son of the president. Oh, my gosh. 
they eventually, the paramedics arrive, they take away the dead body. I know nothing of this. And then a complete stranger, Derek, a guy that I don't know from Adam, informs me that Alexander is dead through Facebook. And this guy is Aaron Smith Levin, who's got a huge YouTube channel right now. The great Aaron is just sucking it, sucking it to him. So Aaron, when I read this, the denial and disbelief is incredulous. See, I knew I knew he was living in Dallas. So when he says Andre is in Dallas and sent him this, now I thought, you know, there's some kind of mix-up. It must be his father, because he was in his sixties. This was twelve years ago, right? And I thought, it can't be, Alexander's only 27 years old. It can't be, Alexander it must be the father. So I thank Aaron, and then Heber and I get on the phone to the coroner in Los Angeles. And the coroner confirms that Alexander is lying as a dead body. Can you imagine? Just imagine, I'm visualizing Alexander lying in a compartment. They stack up dead bodies. They t tag their toe, their big toe, with the name. But they're, they're sliced in a compartment waiting for autopsy. I didn't know this, but anyone who's only 27, or usually a 27-year-old doesn't go to bed and wake up dead. So automatic autopsy when a 27-year-old dies. They did confiscate a whole bottle of pills by his bedside, mostly opioids. Alexander had walking pneumonia. We visited with the coroner multiple times, great guy, Ed Winter. And Ed said, Karen, a $20 antibiotic would have saved Alexander's life. $20. But he got no antibiotics. He, had, he needed antibiotics. And he took opioids because he had chest pain. And his solution to chest pain is take painkillers. Mm. Imagine how I felt. You see how the Church of Scientology has blood on its hands. They would rather someone die than see an affluent parent who could give. They weren't going to pay for a full medical. Ah, there's Alexander in the middle with his Boy Scout thing. They weren't going to pay for Alexander to have a full medical. But they had the money to fully pay for a Top Gun lawyer. Ooh, this, ugh, I don't know if it's too late to send you a picture. This horrible, horrible woman who defends pedophiles and cr other criminals, she's, she's, <laughs> They quickly lock down any communication about Alexander's death and referred the when the coroner wanted when the coroner's investigation team wanted to ask more questions, they were barricaded mm. and could only talk to this lawyer. This lawyer is hired by the cult. She even showed up in the Danny Masterson. She showed up. <laughs> this gross horse looking lawyer who I've gone blank on the name I couldn't send you the picture anyway so Alexander's lying in the morgue and Ed Winter is talking to Jeffrey and me and says you know we are so sorry but 
we cannot let you in for California law. We don't allow relatives to see the dead body. But you could ask at the mortuary once we release the body to the mortuary. And I long to see him one last time. I'm beating up on myself. I'm just, this is the result of my fault. I was in the cult. I had a baby in the cult. I had a C-section. Alexander came from my womb. But the cult of Scientology locks it all down. And because they did not let me see my own son, he's now dead. I, I, I have to look inward. What did I do or not do? Alexander and I raced to the mortuary in the next neighborhood, Pasadena. We, we, we absolutely know the bodies there. And we plead with the owner to let me have one last kiss on his forehead, see him for 20 seconds. And the guy's in terror. He's been warned by the Church of Scientology that I must not see my son for the last time. He says, I'm so sorry, you, we, we cannot. He, he's, he's been threatened. He's actually agitated. He's, he says, no, I can't do it. There are very strict instructions. The wife has priority over the mother and the wife says, now, Alec, Alec, I got on really well with my daughter-in-law. I took her to dinners, I spoiled her, I brought her goodies. She would never have forbid. Scientology's intelligence division completely manipulated her so I could not see him. Now, the cult of Scientology wanted to bury this all and hoped I would never find out that I would find out six months later. They hadn't planned on any, you know, memorial or remembrance, nothing. They wanted it, they didn't want to spread that Alexander was dead. He was a very popular kid in the Sea Orc. So I arranged a memorial for Alexander on a boat, a yacht, a hired a yacht. And Alexander was very, um, he, he embraced everyone. He didn't have this them versus us mentality, even though he was raised in the seal. He didn't have that. Whether you were gay, whether you were black, whether you were Hispanic, whether you were Jewish, this is, Alexander, you were just a human being. He was very, he had an open tent for all. I think that's why he was, so light, there was no prejudice in this boy. So we invited everyone on the boat, exquisite food. Hundreds of people showed up. It was on social media for Alexander's funeral. I've got a whole video on it. And we released balloons into the sky and, oh, some people, some a couple of incredible singers, we, we did a memorial of his life. And I told the story of how one day he happened to get a day off, which is rare, and he dragged me to Mexico to go to an orphanage. He, he, he was watching, he saw on CNN some orphan children sifting through garbage dumps to look for some tin that they could sell as sell empty Coca-Cola cans or whatever. And he was just, he was so affected that these orphan children have to go through a waste dump. So he, <laughs> he gathered up a huge amount of toys and clothes and we went to an orphanage in Mexico and Alexander hug these orphan children and i thought my god he's seven years old and he's he cares about children in another country that are orphans 
I told this little anecdote at his funeral. I thought, how does a seven-year-old drag their mom to an orphanage <laughs> to give away his toys and coat? That was Alexander. Mm. So we show up at the mortuary, and Alexander's body is just, it's just the wall. His body is the other side of the wall. In this, in, and the guy is too scared to let me see the dead body of my own son. He just won't. We tried. We said, we won't. We'll never let anybody know. We're not going in there to take pictures. We just want that last, you know, how you, that's why they have wakes. You get a last look at someone you loved. No go. Absolutely no go. Scientology in their vengeance for me speaking out on their dark secret places made absolutely sure that I never had a last look at Alexander. And that this whole incident, now I'll never be a grandma. I'll never, there's no bloodline. We had only one child. And by aborting Alexander's first pregnancy of his first wife, and then he dies for want of a $20 antibiotic. I'll never be a grandma. I'll never have munchkins too. Cuddle and this is this. Who would have, when they recruit all sucking all these people, they're not telling them you're never going to have a child. Then they, mm -hmm. now they still enforce coerced abortion, but they do it underground very nicely. It hasn't stopped because people have left and spoken out how it's still going on, but it's done surreptitiously, covertly. So what is the lesson you learn? Now, Derek, I could only do two things. I could curl up in a ball and just be an incredible victim crying for the rest of my life. And just, I could just be overwhelmed by it all. Or, it could incentivize me to let other mothers of the world learn a lesson as to what can happen when you join a radicalized cult. Mm. Jehovah's Witness, I don't think, can force it. Church of LDS wants you to <laughs> multiple babies, the Mormon church and the polygamous church. Just have as many babies as you want. Scientology is the cult that enforces killing your child. And that's the message that I've spoken of in many of my videos on my channel. A cult is more deadly than you think. Derek, I want you to have last words on this. It still stirs me up a lot to talk about it all. Yeah. But I'm fighting the good fight, and I'm letting the world know the story of a Scientology kid who served in the Sea Org 15, 20 years of his life, got no medical, and was dead at 27. So Garrett. my kind of my assessment here is <clears throat> it's not only a cult that coercively forces you to abort or try to not have children at all costs. They also separate you from your family, similar to what we find in other very strict, bad cults like Jehovah's Witnesses and stuff. It makes sense why you didn't want to record on this for so long um, and why it's something you've tried to avoid. Even when I've tried to say, let's talk about your son. Let's talk about your son. If you're interested, let's talk about your son. Um, and here we are talking about your son. So it's not just that they are doing this kind of act in the Sea Org, trying to control the members by coercively make them have no families, no bloodlines, right? Nothing they have to 
worry about other than themselves. But it's also the fact that when you become blown, if you will, uh, you become a apostate of your particular uh, group, you're, they are coercively aborting your family from you. And so it is another way of abortion that, you know, isn't good. Um, you could imagine, right, in the free world that we live in, we consider this a free world that we live in. If you have a harmful family member or something, there is the freedom and the ability usually to be able to go and get away from that, unless you're in like a very abusive relationship and you don't know how to get out. But um, you, you have the freedom to leave and to not do that. But what about when they hijack your mind to the point where you don't have the freedom to see your family? You don't have the freedom to even have a relationship with them because their ideas are more important than reality, to be honest with you. And so I just want to say, I'm sorry for your loss. And I hope that more people who watch your words who can empathize with you, um, see this and spread the message. Stay away from Scientology. Thank you, Derek. Actually, his death went viral. You would not believe the media just exploded with the story. And even in countries like New Zealand, South Africa, Australia, it was Ale the death of Alexander in, in the cult. Mm. The cult is a love-only me cult. Family and children are lower down the totem pole. You must devote, as crazy as it sounds, you must devote your love only to the game of Scientology. Right. Mm. And but but this is slowly. It happens on a great. You don't jump in and have this happen. It's, it's a great. Thing. Anyway, that's the story of Alexander. Hope that other mothers, especially mothers who are slowly getting drawn into some kind of cult. I hope you can see what can go wrong.